Hey everybody, what's going on? Hellmite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. Today I wanted to talk about all of the tank changes that have been on PvE recently, and kind of give my first few thoughts on exactly what they're supposed to be accomplishing and why you would want to go with these changes. Now, I think generally the opinion of these changes has been pretty mixed. I don't think any of them players are particularly super excited about or, you know, generally super critical of, but I think there's a lot of interesting changes on PBE right now for these three tanks, which I will talk about in just a minute. And I want to spend some time and kind of break down exactly what these changes are and why we should be talking about them and kind of what they do for the champions in general. So first and foremost, the first tank that had changes on PBE is Galio. Now all the changes have been reverted. They will not be going live um, on this patch. They will be probably going coming back on the PBE for next cycle though for more testing. But generally the changes were his Q's mana cost was lowered, the and the base damage was increased, and the wind blast damage was changed from having a flat damage value into just percent damage value. Meanwhile, his R no longer knocks up enemies in the center for a longer duration. Instead, everybody gets knocked up for the same amount. Now, the R change isn't that big of a deal. I think that's pretty. I think that's pretty subjective because the center. No one is ever in the center really, and it has a lot more value in pro play when you can reliably get Galio ults in the center versus normal play. So, I think that's a fine standardization change. I'm not sure that the Q change is really what I would be looking for in Galio. The intent was to reduce his wave clear and give him something more to think about in lane, but I really don't think that does a whole lot for him because essentially what losing the flat damage on the wind blast does is it really reduces Galio's ability to trade in the mid lane or to be able to last it or put pressure on mages that he should be able to put pressure on because he is supposed to be an anti-mage tank. So with the change, he loses some of his ability to kind of poke people out, some of his ability to wave clear, and at that point, what's kind of the point of playing the champion? You can't really play him top lane anymore because he doesn't do well into a lot of the bruisers that are currently getting played top. He only really does well into mages in the mid lane, but if he can't wave clear, he gets shoved in all day, he can't roam and make plays with Hero's Entrance, and in general, there's a lot less of a reason to play Galio. So... I don't know that these changes are necessarily going to fix him, especially given that part of his wave clear already came from casting Justice Punch on the wave, which is a fairly risky way to go about it because he has to be in the middle of the wave and dash back to towards his tower or dash through the wave, at which point he's in the middle of the lane and he's a lot more vulnerable to getting damaged. Now, I don't know how you necessarily fix this problem, and I think Riot did revert the changes. They are considering larger changes, Meddler said as much in his most recent post. Um, but I do want whatever happens to bind Galio more towards being an anti-magic damage tank. I think the ideal place for Galio is the kind of champion you play when the enemy team is packing multiple magic damage carries. Especially if it's something like Elise Jungle, Malzahar mid lane, let's say. Potentially even something like a Mage mid and then like a Rumble or an Elise top lane. Something along those lines should be the situation where you pick Galio instead of just playing him because he's a strong tank with good wave clear. I think is generally where I want him to be. I don't know how you would get there, but I don't think that the changes on PvE currently solve that problem. I'm alright with the R change, but I do think that in general there needs to be some other kind of changes to make Galio be in a slightly better spot. Moving on to another champion's changes that were averted. Sejuani had some changes on the PvE. She received a ton of base stat increases from her base armor, HP per level, attack speed per level, and armor per level were all increased. Additionally, her Q's damage was increased. Her W's second hit damage was increased, but the, sl the second hit no longer slows. And her permafrost has some interesting changes. The stun duration was lowered, but the damage was increased by quite a substantial amount by the time it hits max rank. It goes all the way up to 280 damage damage at max rank from just 80 and the range was lowered to 600 now again these changes were reverted so you don't have to worry about them going live they will be back on the next cycle for more testing but again i think these changes are in the wrong direction i think this is why a lot of these changes are sort of contested at least for these last two champions is i don't think players necessarily think these changes solve the problems that the champion's been having i think the biggest thing is that these champions need to have some kind of the biggest thing for Sashwani is that she is a tank, which means that she should be getting picked for her durability and for her crowd control. And I think the biggest issue you have currently with Sejuani is that Riot are removing crowd control. The W no longer has a slow attached to it. And in exchange, she is getting more damage, which seems a little bass backwards to me because you're not actually buffing the reasons why people play Sejuani. Instead, you're making her more damaging. It feels like you would almost want to play her mid lane at this point. Now, Meddler did admit that 
Part of the problem with Sejuani's, uh, uh, the, dispar the disparity between Sejuani's play rate in solo queue versus her play rate in professional play is because of the value of her passive and how pros are able to get a lot more out of it than the average player. And I think he's right on that account. I think the fact that she is just so impossibly durable when Frost Armor is up and then the squishiest tank by far when it's down, I think is a big problem. And honestly, I think it's too swingy of a mechanic to really keep around. I would love to see a reversion to the original values on Frost Armor to just have it give the slow the slow duration and the armor buff while you're in combat. I think I would love to see that change come back because the current Frost Armor I don't think really does that much for Sejuani um, in regular play. I think it makes her feel really squishy, which is terrible when you are a tank champion. Um, and in general, like, like he was saying... Pros get more value out of it than solo Q, so I'd love to see that kind of reversion happen. I think the rest of her kit is strong enough on its own to stand up, even if she loses that change, but I really don't think she needs to maintain the plus 100 armor magic resistance and then a percentage of her armor magic resistance again on top of that. I think that just makes her way too hard to balance out. If you wanted it to just be the percent, I could see that sticking around as well, because at the very least, then it rewards Sejuani for getting tanky, and it makes her very, very durable in the late game. It kind of reminds me of Garen's old W, where it just flat gave you more value for armor magic resistance that you bought. I would love to see those kind of changes come back, but I think the current changes were rightfully reverted, and I would love to see something else come back, because increasing your damage just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and I'm glad that Riot are not putting that out on this patch. Moving on to talk about our last tank, though, we are going to be talking about Orn. Now, these changes are still on PBE and will likely be going live, so this is actually pretty important. So first, Orn's HP per level and armor per level are being increased. His passive has been tweaked a little bit, I'll get back to that. Um, his Q and his E have both received some small quality of life buffs. Um, they both have lower mana costs, and the uh, E's knockup duration has been increased slightly. But the biggest changes are to his W and his R. W no longer grants a shield, but has unstoppable back. The, br the duration on it was lowered as well, but the brittle damage was increased. And the cooldown is now a flat 14 at all ranks, where it used to be scaling from 17 down to 9 with rank. Additionally, Call the Forge God, the first the, uh, first cast on it, the slow, now scales with the amount of time that it's existed for. And the knockup duration is now decreased by 50% on subsequent targets after hitting an enemy champion. Now what all this means is that Orn is actually significantly easier to trade with in lane because the W doesn't grant him a shield. It's less of a win automatically button. And it gives you a lot better counterplay to deal with him. If you see him cast the W for wave clear, you have a much better chance of fighting back at him. Conversely though, if Orn does get the brittle on you and is able to proc it, you take a lot more damage. So I do actually really like that. Now the cooldown change is actually more beneficial to Orn in ranged matchups because you usually max Q in that matchup anyways. Um, and so having the flat 14 on W really, really helps. But losing the shield, I think, is a really big deal for Orn. It gives him significantly less sort of pseudo lane sustain. It makes him less tanky in team fights. But I think that getting Unstoppable back is a fair trade because it gives Orn a lot more ability to make openings and fights to deal damage and also get out of some sticky gank situations because you can time that with enemy crowd control and still try to escape. The R change, I think, is just in general to tone down what is, I consider to be, the strongest, one of the strongest ultimates in the game. Uh, not have it, having the slow scale with the duration, I think, is a lot better because it means that a snap cast R at maximum range won't slow you for that very much and gives you the ability to dodge the second cast. And then, meanwhile, having the 50% reduction if it's already hit a champion helps your frontline do something to deal with Orn beyond literally just pick Braum and nullify it entirely. Now, is Orn going to be weaker? I think so, but at the same time, I think that this is probably a good change for Orn. I think it makes uh, the counterplay to him a lot more doable, and in general, I think I do like this sort of change on the champion. I know a lot of people are saying they're not a big fan, but I think I think this is a much better direction to take. Finally, I did mention that his passive was tweaked. Um, instead of giving his allies the ability to buy one upgraded item once he hits level uh, 11, instead, now once he hits level 11, any upgradable items he currently owns or buys in the future automatically become upgraded for no cost. And for the next four levels after 11, he can upgrade an item for an ally by getting close to them and clicking on them. What this means, actually, is pretty big for Orm because he becomes a gold-accelerated champion, kind of like Draven and Gangplank, because if you are going to buy an Abyssal Mask in the first place, that just straight gets upgraded. If you buy, let's say, Sunfire Cape, that just straight gets upgraded. If you have both, you're getting 2,000 golds worth of stats for free, literally just by hitting level 11. So that's going to be a huge deal, and it's going to make Orn really, really scary to deal with. 
Now, the fact that he has to do it for his allies is actually kind of a buff in solo queue because oftentimes allies completely forgot about the fact that Orn was in the game and you can buy these items. So I do like the fact that Orn can actually walk over to ally and forge this item for them and say, hey, here you go, I upgraded this. I also know that Riot are adding a couple more upgradable items to Orn's inventory. I know he can upgrade Yomu's Ghost Blade now, for example. So... Assassins don't qu feel quite left out. I think it feels more thematic, and I think it's a better way to iterate on that passive. But the biggest balance changes were on the W and the R. I think this is toning him down a bit in a way that will really affect his his play rate in professionals, while also making him slightly more usable in solo queue and not necessarily as much of a brick wall. It just makes him generally more balanceable, losing the shield and having an R with which actually has counterplay. Anyways, those are just kind of my thoughts on these uh, these tank changes. I would love to hear your thoughts, especially if you play one of these champions. Um, go ahead and let me know what you're thinking down in the comment section below, especially if you have an idea for what you would do to Galio or Sejuani. I would love to hear what, what you guys are kind of thinking about that. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you really enjoyed today's video, consider subscribing. I upload a video every Monday, Friday, and on patch days as well. And if you're looking for more Gravel Lantern content, you can check out my blog, which is linked down in the description. I upload an article just about each and every single day for your enjoyment. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I will talk to you all later.